Hey guys, good morning. This is Leland. Thank you so much for watching these, these videos. Um, so as some of you know, I've been reading a very, very long book called I Do Not Have Enough Faith to Be, to be an Atheist. And the book goes into much scientific detail on the proof of the existence of God beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, the Big Bang and how someone had caused the Big Bang, uh, logical, uh, logical arguments why miracles are possible and do happen, and the reliability of the Bible, and the person of Jesus, and his resurrection, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, there's a lot in this book. I highly recommend it if you wanted to check something out like this. So however, in this video, and in light of Christmas next week, I decided to wrap up my book review with focusing on a section of the book that talks about and focuses on the reliability of the New Testament. So is the New Testament just a fable and a fairy tale? Or were these actual events and real life history that actually occurred around 2000 years ago? In other words, is the New Testament reliable? And how do we prove its historicity? So let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Okay, so if the New Testament is actual history, then the authors go on to share that we need to answer two questions. Question number one is, do we have accurate copies of the original documents? that were written down in the first century. And then number two is, do those documents speak truth? Do you remember that game of telephone in a kid? I do, I think it was around first grade and you know, the teacher tells one student one thing and then it goes on and on and on and then by student number 15 and student number 20, it's completely different than what the teacher actually said, right? So to the casual observer, it seems like that can happen with ancient documents having been transmitted from generation to generation over 2000 years, right? Well, fortunately, the New Testament was not transmitted that way. Since it was not told to one person who told another person, the telephone does not apply here. Numerous people witnessed the New Testament events, Christian and non-Christian slash anti-Christian sources. For example, Josephus was a Jewish non-Christian historian in the first century. Others such as uh, Celsus, uh, Tacitus, uh, the Jewish Talmud, and all of which can be considered uh, non and anti-Christian sources. So just a few housekeeping rules. Um, remember that the New, Testament, the New Testament documents are 27 different documents written on 27 different scrolls, written by um, nine different writers over a 20 to 50 year period. So there's only one problem, the author goes on. So far, none of the original documents of the New Testament have been discovered. We only have copies of the original writings called manuscripts. Will this prevent us from knowing what the originals actually said? Not at all, the authors said. Let's go on to see why. Okay, so all significant literature from the ancient world is reconstructed into its original form by comparing manuscripts that survived. Let me just say that one more time. All significant literature from the ancient world is reconstructed into its original form, form by comparing manuscripts that survived. So to reconstruct the original, it helps to have a large number of manuscripts that are written not long after the original. So more manuscripts and the earlier manuscripts usually provide more trustworthy testimony and enable a more accurate reconstruction. So the New Testament documents have more manuscripts, earlier manuscripts, and more abundantly supported manuscripts than the best 10 pieces of classical literature combined. At the last count, there was actually 5,800 handwritten manuscripts of the New Testament written in Greek, and there's also 20,000 plus manuscripts written in other languages. So most ancient works survive on fewer than a dozen manuscripts. Did you hear that? Most ancient works survive on fewer than a dozen manuscripts, yet few historians question the historicity of the events those works describe. So the New Testament has more manuscripts that were written soon after the originals. So the bottom line is this, compared to other ancient documents, the New Testament was recorded from the originals to the copies more quickly and the soonest than compared to other ancient documents. See this graphic here? Not only was it the shortest time gap, but there are more manuscripts for the New Testament than any other ancient document combined. So the author goes on to share how scholars accurately reconstruct the New Testament with accuracy and the fact that they have many manuscripts, early manuscripts, and supporting manuscripts from that era. Now let's go on to the next point. Is the New Testament historically reliable? So the question is, are they documents, is the New Testament, are they documents written soon after the events by eyewitnesses? 
or by those who interviewed the eyewitnesses? Are the documents written much later by a biased followers who simply embellish details about the life of a real historical figure? Right? In order to find out, the authors use the process to test the New Testament documents by the same criteria that historians often use to, de to determine whether or not to believe a given historical document. So these include question number one, do we have early testimony? Question number two, do we have eyewitness testimony? Question number three, do we have testimony from multiple independent eyewitness sources? Question number four, are the eyewitnesses trustworthy? And then do we have corroborating evidence from archeology span or other writers? And then do we have an enemy um, at a station? And then question number seven is, does the testimony contain events or details that are embarrassing to the authors? So at any rate, the authors of the book then go into each one of these points and show that in fact, the New Testament passes the reliability test. Okay, great, so here's my whole point to this video, right? Given that the New Testament is a historically verifiable document of events that actually occurred 2000 years ago, and if you have an honest look at that and the, confront the reality of it, you'll see that too. The question is, what are you gonna do with God this Christmas, right? Did he indeed send his son Jesus to die on the cross and resurrect from the dead, whose main goal was to give peace and goodwill to men on earth by dying for their sins, that whoever believes in him will live with him forever after this life, and even now in this life will take away their shame and guilt that constantly speaks to their conscience? You know, we all know that the New Testament is accurate and recorded from actual events. And as a reminder, we have verses like this. Okay, so here's a scripture from Romans. This is out of, the, out of the New Testament. It says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. So they have no excuses for not knowing God. Guys, the bottom line is that you know God exists. And you can tell just from seeing creation, as scripture talks about, and seeing his qualities through nature. And then here's another verse that talks about our conscience. It says, even Gentiles who are non-Jews, that includes uh, you and I, uh, who do, even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. They demonstrate that God's law is written on their hearts uh, for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them they are doing right. Right, and you know, there's a lot more to this in life and we've all screwed up and made mistakes and how that constantly weighs on us if we haven't yet given that to God and allowed him to be in our lives and in relationship with him, right? And yeah, sure, you could have ignored it and ignore the reality of that and you know, just go on and live your life by constantly avoiding that and ultimately the choice is yours. And the New Testament speaks of how some people will walk away from God and their own conscience will be burned or seared like an iron and how they'll just completely ignore him, right? And God will let you do that. I mean, there's no, no, no he doesn't want that, um, but he gave you free will um, and because that's what true love is, right? True love is um, giving you the option to either love back or to not love back, right? So we know what the gospel is from the New Testament and if you must compare it to any other religion or new age thinking, the gospel is the simplest thing ever, right? There's no ladder to heaven. Uh, it's not about good works. You don't have to be afraid of God and never know if he truly forgives you or not. Um, God isn't some impersonal force. Even your own conscience knows that being personal in this life with others is more valuable than being impersonal. And the God of the universe, who's also the God of the Bible, is personal and he wants relationship with you. So ultimately, here's what I would like this Christmas. All I want is for you, whoever's watching this, whether I've known you for 20 years, I, I just met you, or, um, or some way, somehow we know each other. I just want for you to know what the unadulterated, simple gospel is. Not what some religions have come on the scene six to eight plus centuries later to try to redefine what actually happened back on the cross with Jesus resurrecting from the dead. No, not that. I want you to know what the simple, actual gospel is that was shared from eyewitness testimonies of Christian and non-anti-Christian sources of what actually happened 2000 years ago. I want you to know what that is. So I want you to know what the gospel is and what God did for you. And then I just want you to just decide. You know, the choice is totally yours, of course, obviously. And God is a gentleman and he gives you, he gives you that choice. I know what I want for you, right? I know God loves you. I know God cares for you. Um, 
but maybe you've been pushing him out for a long time and have just been closed off. So perhaps this year, your gift to God this Christmas is your heart, right? Psalms 145 verse eight says that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. I love that. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. There's another scripture that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Another scripture says, this is from, all, this is from the New Testament. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Um, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. And then um, it goes on from there, but just remember that also salvation is a gift from God, right? You can't earn it. There's a scripture that talks about God saves you by his grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this because it's a gift from God. Okay, so that was the whole video. The whole point, let's keep the focus on the focus of Christmas this year for Christmas. And let's remember that God sent his son to be born of a virgin and to die on a rugged, ugly cross for you, being beaten, scorned, shamed publicly. Um, his wrists and ankles were literally nailed to a cross with about a two foot nail each. And then he rose from the dead, defeating death and sin that you may have an eternal life and a relationship with the God of the universe now and on this earth and into eternity. So anyways, hopefully this was encouraging. Merry Christmas. Uh, this is the summary and final video of the book review. And hopefully you got a little nugget out of this and just wanted to encourage you with some really good stuff this Christmas. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.